Blood Sugar Level, Wikipedia Article Audio The blood sugar level, blood sugar concentration, or blood glucose level is the amount of glucose present in the blood of humans and other animals. Glucose is a simple sugar and approximately 4 grams of glucose are present in the blood of humans at all times. The body tightly regulates blood glucose levels as a part of metabolic homeostasis. Glucose is stored in skeletal muscle and liver cells in the form of glycogen. In fasted individuals, blood glucose is maintained at a constant level at the expense of glycogen stores in the liver and skeletal muscle. In humans, glucose is the primary source of energy, and is critical for normal function in a number of tissues, particularly the human brain which consumes approximately 60% of blood glucose in fasted, sedentary individuals. Glucose can be transported from the intestines or liver to other tissues in the body via the bloodstream. Cellular glucose uptake is primarily regulated by insulin, a hormone produced in the pancreas. Units Normal values in humans. Glucose levels are usually lowest in the morning, before the first meal of the day, and rise after meals for an hour or two by a few millimoles. Blood sugar levels outside the normal range may be an indicator of a medical condition. A persistently high level is referred to as hyperglycemia, low levels are referred to as hypoglycemia. Diabetes mellitus is characterized by persistent hyperglycemia from any of several causes, and is the most prominent disease related to failure of blood sugar regulation. There are different methods of testing and measuring blood sugar levels. The intake of alcohol causes an initial surge in blood sugar, and later tends to cause levels to fall. Also, Certain drugs can increase or decrease glucose levels. The international standard way of measuring blood glucose levels is in terms of a molar concentration, measured in mol/l. In the United States, Germany, and other countries mass concentration is measured in mg/dl. Since the molecular weight of glucose C6H12O6 is 180, the difference between the two units is a factor of 18, so that 1 mol slash L of glucose is equivalent to 18 mg slash DL. Normal value ranges may vary slightly among different laboratories. Many factors affect a person's blood sugar level. The body's homeostatic mechanism of blood sugar regulation, when operating normally, restores the blood sugar level to a narrow range of about 4.4 to 6.1 mol slash L. Animals The normal blood glucose level for non-diabetics, should be between 3.9 and 5.5 mol slash L. The mean normal blood glucose level in humans is about 5.5 mol slash L, however, this level fluctuates throughout the day. Blood sugar levels for those without diabetes and who are not fasting should be below 6.9 mol slash L. The blood glucose target range for diabetics, according to the American Diabetes Association, should be 5.07.2 mol slash L before meals, and less than 10 mol slash L after meals. Despite widely variable intervals between meals or the occasional consumption of meals with a substantial carbohydrate load, human blood glucose levels tend to remain within the normal range. However, shortly after eating, the blood glucose level may rise, in non-diabetics, temporarily up to 7.8 mol slash L or slightly more. For people with diabetes maintaining tight diabetes control, 
the American Diabetes Association recommends a post-meal glucose level of less than 10 mol L and a fasting plasma glucose of 3.9 to 7.2 mol L. Regulation the actual amount of glucose in the blood and body fluids is very small. In a healthy adult male of 75 kg with a blood volume of 5 liters, a blood glucose level of 5.5 mol L amounts to 5 grams, equivalent to about a teaspoonful of sugar. Part of the reason why this amount is so small is that, to maintain an influx of glucose into cells, Enzymes modify glucose by adding phosphate or other groups to it. In general, ranges of blood sugar in common domestic ruminants are lower than in many monogastric mammals. However this generalization does not extend to wild ruminants or came lids. For serum glucose in mg dl, reference ranges of 42 to 75 for cows, 44 to 81 for sheep, and 48 to 76 for goats, but 61 to 124 for cats, 62 to 108 for dogs, 62 to 114 for horses, 66 to 116 for pigs, 75 to 155 for rabbits, and 90 to 140 for llamas have been reported. A 90% reference interval for serum glucose of 26 to 181 mg dl has been reported for captured mountain goats, where no effects of the pursuit and capture on measured levels were evident. For beluga whales, the 25-75% range for serum glucose has been estimated to be 94 to 115 mg dl. For the white rhinoceros, one study has indicated that the 95% range is 28 to 140 mg dl. For harp seals, a serum glucose range of 4.9 to 12.1 mol L has been reported. For hooded seals, a range of 7.5 to 15.7 mol L has been reported. The body's homeostatic mechanism keeps blood glucose levels within a narrow range. It is composed of several interacting systems, of which hormone regulation is the most important. Abnormality in blood sugar levels There are two types of mutually antagonistic metabolic hormones affecting blood glucose levels. High blood sugar these hormones are secreted from pancreatic islets which are bundles of endocrine tissues. There are four types of pancreatic islets, alpha cells, beta cells, delta cells, and F cells. Glucagon is secreted from alpha cells, while insulin is secreted by beta cells. Together they regulate the blood glucose levels through negative feedback a process where the end product of one reaction stimulates the beginning of another reaction. In blood glucose levels, insulin lowers the concentration of glucose in the blood. The lower blood glucose level triggers glucagon to be secreted, and repeats the cycle. Low blood sugar In order for blood glucose to be kept stable, Modifications to insulin, glucagon, epinephrine, and cortisol are made. Each of these hormones has a different responsibility to keep blood glucose regulated. When blood sugar is too high, insulin tells muscles to take up excess glucose for storage. Glucagon responds to too low of a blood glucose level, it informs the tissue to produce more glucose. Epinephrine prepares the muscles and respiratory system for activity in the case of a fight-and-flight response. Lastly, cortisol supplies the body with fuel in times of heavy stress. If blood sugar levels remain too high the body suppresses appetite over the short term. 
Long-term hyperglycemia causes many long-term health problems including heart disease, eye, kidney, and nerve damage. Glucose measurement Blood sugar levels above 300 can cause fatal reactions. Ketones will be very high initiating ketoacidosis. Mayo Clinic recommends emergency room treatment above 300 mg DL blood glucose. The most common cause of hyperglycemia is diabetes. When diabetes is the cause, physicians typically recommend an anti-diabetic medication as treatment. From the perspective the majority of patients, treatment with an old, well-understood diabetes drug such as metformin will be the safest, most effective, least expensive, most comfortable route to managing the condition. Diet changes and exercise implementation may also be part of a treatment plan for diabetes. Fasting blood glucose levels may be higher than the post-meal blood glucose in many of the healthy subjects. Such individuals may be said to have physiological insulin resistance and may develop diabetes mellitus as long-term complication. In clinical and laboratory practices, Many of the time a healthy normal subject will present a fasting blood glucose value higher than the post-meal blood glucose value. This creates confusion since there is a common perception that in blood, postprandial glucose level should be higher than fasting glucose level. The repeated investigation subsequently yields somewhat similar type of result. If blood sugar levels drop too low, a potentially fatal condition called hypoglycemia develops. Symptoms may include lethargy, impaired mental functioning, irritability, shaking, twitching, weakness in arm and leg muscles, pale complexion, sweating, loss of consciousness. Mechanisms that restore satisfactory blood glucose levels after extreme hypoglycemia must be quick and effective to prevent extremely serious consequences of insufficient glucose, confusion or unsteadiness and, in the extreme loss of consciousness and seizures. Without discounting the potentially quite serious conditions and risks due to or oftentimes accompanying hyperglycemia, especially in the long term, it is still generally more dangerous to have too little glucose especially if levels are very low in the blood than too much, at least temporarily, because glucose is so important for metabolism and nutrition and the proper functioning of the body's organs. This is especially the case for those organs that are metabolically active or that require a constant, regulated supply of blood sugar. In healthy individuals, Blood glucose regulating mechanisms are generally quite effective, and symptomatic hypoglycemia is generally found only in diabetics using insulin or other pharmacological treatment, and in starvation or severe malnutrition or malabsorption, and conditions such as anorexia. Hypoglycemic episodes can vary greatly between persons and from time to time, both in severity and swiftness of onset. For severe cases, prompt medical assistance is essential, as damage to brain and other tissues and even death will result from sufficiently low blood glucose levels. Sample Source Glucose testing in a fasting individual, show comparable levels of glucose in arterial, venous, and capillary blood. But following meals, capillary, and arterial blood glucose levels can be significantly higher than venous levels. Although these differences vary widely, one study found that following the consumption of 50 grams of glucose, the mean capillary blood glucose concentration is higher than the mean venous blood glucose concentration by 35%. Sample Type Glucose is measured in whole blood, plasma, or serum. Historically, blood glucose values were given in terms of whole blood, 
but most laboratories now measure and report plasma or serum glucose levels. Because red blood cells have a higher concentration of protein than serum, serum has a higher water content and consequently more dissolved glucose than does whole blood. To convert from whole blood glucose, multiplication by 1.14 has been shown to generally give the serum slash plasma level. Catabolic hormones which increase blood glucose, and one anabolic hormone, which decreases blood glucose. Collection of blood in clot tubes for serum chemistry analysis permits the metabolism of glucose in the sample by blood cells until separated by centrifugation. Red blood cells, for instance, do not require insulin to intake glucose from the blood. Higher than normal amounts of white or red blood cell counts can lead to excessive glycolysis in the sample with substantial reduction of glucose level if the sample is not processed quickly. Ambient temperature at which the blood sample is kept prior to centrifuging and separation of plasma slash serum also affects glucose levels. At refrigerator temperatures, glucose remains relatively stable for several hours in a blood sample. Loss of glucose can be prevented by using fluoride tubes since fluoride inhibits glycolysis. However, these should only be used when blood will be transported from one hospital laboratory to another for glucose measurement. Red top serum separator tubes also preserve glucose in samples after being centrifuged isolating the serum from cells. To prevent contamination of the sample with intravenous fluids, particular care should be given to drawing blood samples from the arm opposite the one in which an intravenous line is inserted. Alternatively, blood can be drawn from the same arm within four line after the four has been turned off for at least five minutes, and the arm has been elevated to drain infused fluids away from the vein. Inattention can lead to large errors since as little as 10% contamination with a 5% glucose solution will elevate glucose in a sample by 500 mg dl or more. Remember that the actual concentration of glucose in blood is very low, even in the hyperglycemic. Two major methods have been used to measure glucose. The first, still in use in some places, is a chemical method exploiting the nonspecific reducing property of glucose in a reaction with an indicator substance that changes color when reduced. Since other blood compounds also have reducing properties, this technique can produce erroneous readings in some situations. The more recent technique, using enzymes specific to glucose, is less susceptible to this kind of error. The two most common employed enzymes are glucose oxidase and hexokinase. Average blood glucose concentrations can also be measured. This method measures the level of glycated hemoglobin, which is representative of the average blood glucose levels over the last, approximately, 120 days. Measurement Techniques Clinical Correlation Etymology and use of term In either case, the chemical system is commonly contained on a test strip which is inserted into a meter, and then has a blood sample applied. Test strip shapes and their exact chemical composition vary between meter systems and cannot be interchanged. Formerly, some test strips were read by visual comparison against a color chart printed on the vial label. Strips of this type are still used for urine glucose readings, but for blood glucose levels they are obsolete. Their error rates were, in any case, much higher. Errors when using test strips were often caused by the age of the strip or exposure to high temperatures or humidity. More precise blood glucose measurements are performed in a medical laboratory using hexokinase, glucose oxidase, or glucose dehydrogenase enzymes. 
Urine glucose readings, however taken, are much less useful. In properly functioning kidneys, glucose does not appear in urine until the renal threshold for glucose has been exceeded. This is substantially above any normal glucose level, and is evidence of an existing severe hyperglycemic condition. However, as urine is stored in the bladder, any glucose in it might have been produced at any time since the last time the bladder was emptied. Since metabolic conditions change rapidly, as a result of any of several factors, this is delayed news and gives no warning of a developing condition. Blood glucose monitoring is far preferable, both clinically and for home monitoring by patients. Healthy urine glucose levels were first standardized and published in 1965 by Hans Rentschler. G. L. U. C. O. S. E. Plus. A. T. P. P. H. O. S. P. H. O. R. Y. L. A. T. I. O. N. H. E. X. O. K. I. N. A. S. E. Plus. M. G. 2. Plus. G. 6. Po. 4. Plus. A. D. P. G. 6. Po. 4. Plus. N. A. D. P. O. X. I. D. A. T. I. O. N, G6 PD, 6 phosphogluconate, plus, N, ADP, H, plus, H, plus, and backslash mathem plus backslash mathem plus backslash mathem plus backslash mathem backslash backslash and plus backslash mathem plus backslash mathem plus backslash mathem backslash 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 end. The fasting blood glucose level, which is measured after a fast of 8 hours, is the most commonly used indication of overall glucose homeostasis, largely because disturbing events such as food intake are avoided. Conditions affecting glucose levels are shown in the table below. Abnormalities in these test results are due to problems in the multiple control mechanism of glucose regulation. The metabolic response to a carbohydrate challenge is conveniently assessed by a postprandial glucose level drawn two hours after a meal or a glucose load. In addition, the glucose tolerance test, consisting of several timed measurements after a standardized amount of oral glucose intake, is used to aid in the diagnosis of diabetes. Error rates for blood glucose measurements systems vary depending on laboratories, and on the methods used. Colorimetry techniques can be biased by color changes in test strips or interference with light source or the light sensor. Electrical techniques are less susceptible to these errors, though not to others. In home use, the most important issue is not accuracy, but trend. Thus if a meter-slash-test strip system is consistently wrong by 10%, there will be little consequence, as long as changes are properly tracked. In the U.S., home-use blood test meters must be approved by the Federal Food and Drug Administration before they can be sold. Finally, there are several influences on blood glucose level aside from food intake. Infection for instance, tends to change blood glucose levels, as does stress either physical or psychological. Exercise, especially if prolonged or long after the most recent meal, will have an effect as well. In the typical person, maintenance of blood glucose at near constant levels will nevertheless be quite effective. In a physiological context, the term is a misnomer because it refers to glucose, yet other sugars besides glucose are always present. Food contains several different types, 
galactose, as well as several food additives such as sorbitol, xylose, maltose, etc. But because these other sugars are largely inert with regard to the metabolic control system, since glucose is the dominant controlling signal for metabolic regulation, the term has gained currency, and is used by medical staff and lay folk alike. The table above reflects some of the more technical and closely defined terms used in the medical field.